with shortness of breath. Please examine her heart. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Rick. Hello. My name is Malika, and today I'd like to examine your heart and just take a general look. Maybe I'll examine your face as well. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Fine. Thank you. Um, can I just have your hands for now? Thank you very much. Okay. Does this shoulder hurt at all? Only if I'm lifting, shopping, things like that. Okay. I've got polymyalgia. Polymyalgia. Do you mind if I just try lifting and you can tell me to stop if it hurts at no. all? Okay. Thank you. No, is that a good rest? All right. It's fine. Okay. So now, could you just take a look at your left side over there as much as you can? Okay. You can just look over there. I'm just going to take a look at your eyes. Is that all right? Okay. Can you look up for me? Okay. Can you look down? It's fine. Can you show me your tongue? And can you just raise it to your room? That's fine. Great. Thank you. Okay. And now I'm just going to take a look at your chest. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Can you feel over your chest, all right? And the snow for your necks is that okay. Okay, now I'm just going to ask you to lean forward for me and just take a couple of deep breaths. your lower back, okay? Mm -hmm. and if you can just sit back for me. And just One minute more. Thank you. Just gonna look, take a look at your legs.
Thank you very much. Um, at this point, I would also like to take a measurement of her blood pressure. Okay. And her also saturations and. Uh... Okay. Good. You finished? Yes, I'm done. Okay, so would you like to present your case, please? Yes. Um, today, after examining um, this uh, lady over here, um, I have found that uh, she was slightly tachypneic at rest. Um, she was not in any discomfort or pain. Um, peripheral examination did not show any signs of um, uh, peripheral signs of uh, infective endocarditis. Um, there was okay. no there was no pallor um, or signs of uh, clubbing. Um, she had a good pulse. And um, looking at her uh, chest exam, okay. um, uh, there was a, uh, a systolic murmur, specifically it was a, a pan-systolic murmur that was radiating to the villa um, with uh, normal heart sounds. Um, chest exam was clear, so and there was no signs of overload. Okay. Um, and just to add, um, her pulse was irregularly irregular, so okay. she was in AF. Okay. Good. Right. You mentioned about the not being overload. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to tell me what signs you've looked for? Um, so, by basally, um, I checked the lungs, um, and they, I didn't feel I didn't hear for any um, crepitations or okay. uh, any added sounds in the base of the lungs. There was no sacral edema. Okay. And um, there was some swelling in the lower limbs, but it wasn't pitting. Okay. So is there any other sign you look for to look for overload? Um, oh, the JVP, and okay. that was not raised. Okay, good. So just moving on to your findings on auscultation. Just remind me, what, what were your findings on auscultation? So, um, apical pulse was also irregular. Um, the uh, heart sounds were normal. Okay. Um, there was a systolic murmur, and it was radiating to the axilla. Okay. Um, I think it was a pan-systolic murmur. So you think it was a pan-systolic murmur radiating to the axilla. Mm -hmm. What would be your diagnosis there? At that point, I think this is a sign of mitral regurgitation. Okay. And you think the patient is in atrial fibrillation? Yeah. Okay. Can you think of any causes that may be responsible for her mitral regurgitation and atrial fibrillation? Um, so. Um, I think the atrial fibrillation should be secondary to her mitral regurgitation because okay. of atrial dilatation. Okay. Um, and her mitral regurg, um, there could be different causes for that, um, including having a previous uh, rheumatic fever. Okay. Um, um, and um, also another cause could be a mitral valve prolapse. Okay. Um, what else? So what, what else could cause mitral regurgitation? What other causes? Other causes uh, could be a previous uh, uh, infarction yeah. and trauma. Okay, okay, good. Let's just come to the atrial fibrillation that you have detected in this lady. Mm -hmm. What would worry you with this patient? What would you like to think about? Um, so, um, a patient in, in active atrial fibrillation is at risk of stroke. Um, so, I would, at this point, um, if the the, with atrial fibrillation, there's uh, a few stages to treating it. So initially, I would either want to uh, control the rate or the rhythm, um, rate and rhythm, and also anticoagulation. Okay. And for that, let's just come to the anticoagulation bit. Mm -hmm. Have you come across any scoring systems that might give you the risk that she runs of a cardioembolic stroke? Yes. Um, there's a scoring system called the Chad Fask score, and. Okay. Um, According to that score, given a two or more points, um, she would be at risk of uh, uh, thromboembolic events, therefore she would need uh, coagulation. Okay, good. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to um, do the collapsing pulse. Okay. So um, you ask the patient first of all whether they've got pain in their shoulder. And then um, with the left arm, you're going, with your left arm, you're going to hold the patient's elbow. And with your right hand, you're going to feel the radial pulse. Once you feel the radial pulse, you have to 
hold it with four fingers so that you feel the collapsing pulse. And what you need to bear in mind is that you're just resting your fingers on the radial pulse and you're not pressing on it. And then you lift the, the arm slightly until you feel that it disappears. You lower it down until you can feel it again. And if it does not disappear, that's not a problem. And then you do all the lifting of the arm with your left arm so, so that with your right arm you're only feeling for the pulse. So the lifting is done with your left arm and you're feeling with your right arm and that's when you feel for a collapsing pulse.